Hello, this is Andy. And in this video, I want to talk about Telesina style grading and grade result color space. So let's first show what I mean with Telesina style grading. So this scene here is currently set up with a grade result color space. So I use the film light Telesina scene template to set it up. So working color space is T-log, but this could also be any kind of common log working color space. And then a great result color space is rec 1886. And so whatever I load into that scene, in this case, it's a linear EXR, but I also have some other clips here, um, a Sony raw clip and a red raw clip. They start with that washed out image. And so then I would add grading layers. And then in one of the layers, for example, here, let's use the video grade, I would add a lot of contrast to the image to make it appear nice on my current display. Let's also bump up the saturation to a more healthy level. And then I might continue grading here downstream. What you will notice is that when you when, when we now continue grading here below our layer two, in which we basically added the needed contrast to the image, some strange things will happen. So now here, for example, I am in a base grade and let's say I want to um, increase the saturation a little bit here. And what, what we can instantly see is, oh wow, her, her hair turns uh, yellow. So what if we um, add even some more saturation? Well, you can then see here some weird artifacts appear on the color checker. Or what if we desaturate um, a little bit we can see that here some weird artifacts are appearing in these blue lights. But this is not only base grade, actually in base light version six, you will see that also if we go into curve grade, uh, for example, and let's do some, I don't know, let's change the color of the reds. We can see that as soon as I touch the, uh, the point, let's make that a little bit more clear. So here I'm adding a point. Uh, to the curve. And as soon as I'm touching it, you can see that lots of the colors are instantly changing. Also here, notice that the blacks are suddenly crushed. So that's, that doesn't look nice. So we're clipping in the blacks. Or if we go to the luminance curve, here we can see we're instantly a uh, adding a lot of weird artifacts to the image. So here's a similar example. So here I have a basically a, a Sony Venice XOCN clip. And I did not grade anything here in layer one, but this is just to indicate you might do some grading here on the log image. And then at one point you insert a true light strip. In that case, it's an S log three to rec 709 cube. So in the true light layer, we're now converting it to rec 709. And now we can see the same problem. So if I go to curve grade here, for example, then, um, image instantly falls apart or also X grade our really cool new tool in version six. So let's say I want to darken the yellow pepper here a little bit. I touch it and as instantly a lot of colors change. We have these clipped blacks. So basically unusable below that true light layer. And this is the last example, but it's uh, very similar. This is a red R3D clip coming in. And here, I guess, again, in layer two, basically I graded in some contrast and saturation. And now if I go to layer three, go to X grade, maybe want to touch here the, the color of the sky um, and boom, um, as soon as I touch something here, uh, I have a dramatic color change and I cannot really um, get it back into a nice, or it's really hard to get it back into a nice color. So it feels really um, broken. And again, the same problems here in uh, in curve grade or um, uh, also base grade, etc. So what is going on? Um, what is the problem here? Because that would not be a good situation that all of these cool new uh, operators are basically almost unusable in that working style. So let's have a look 
at how the great result color space works here. Here first on the left I explain how it works and on the right I put in some real world example values. So when you're working with the great result color space it's not that you're not working color managed. So you're still working in a color managed environment. You're just skipping one part of the color management which is the display rendering transform, the DRT. So this is basically something like the S curve that converts the log image for a given display. And so that part is managed manually by the colorists in the stack. So we have different input color spaces, all are converted to one common working color space. This is typically a log color space, could be T log, could be log C3, could be S log, uh, whatever whatever the colorists uh, prefer as they are basically washed out starting point. So this defines the washed out starting point. And this is the color space that enters the stack in layer zero. And then base light assumes that all the following layers still have the same color space. So let's now um, quickly here go over there and fill it with life in a moment. And then when we're at the bottom of the stack, then base light assigns the great result color space to the images. That means it doesn't change any of the pixel values. It's just now assuming now the image is the great result color space. And in most cases that is rec 1886, 2.4 gamma rec 709. So until here base light thinks the image is still in the log working color space. And then the image is converted to the cursor viewing color space. In most cases this is also REC 1886. So usually these two here are identical. So let's go in here with some real examples. So let's say we have log C3 as an input source and also S log 3 for example and they're all now converted into log C3 because that's what the colorist prefers as a washed out starting point. So the images enter as log C3 the stack and then the colorist uh, starts working on them in these first layers. And now in this example, I assume that in layer five, the colorist applies a, a LUT that converts from log to uh, rec 709 or something. But this could also be a manual conversion with video grade, as I showed, or with curve grade or whatever. Uh, how, however, now in layer five, the image is not log C anymore, but now it's actually more a rec 709 image. So now it looks good contrast wise and saturation wise on a, a video monitor. And so basically up until here, base light correctly thought, okay, so this is a log C3 image, maybe a graded log C3 image, but it's still basically more on the log C domain. But now it's clearly a rec 1886 image in reality, but base light still thinks it's a log C3 image. And because these new color managed tools like base grade, X grade or curve grade, but also there's other tools like uh, boost shadows is color managed or the new, the new hue angles. So there are more and more tools coming in that are all color managed, but they still think it's a log C3 image. And so there's now this misidentification of the image here at in the bottom part of the stack. And then only here with the great result color space, Base light correctly identifies the images as REC1886 and now have a, again the correct understanding of the images and then it's able to convert them also into other viewing color spaces like for example for a DCP into uh, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Okay so that part here of the stack where the image is actually not log anymore, where the image is already looking good or let's say contrast and saturation wise correct on a video display, but base light still assumes their log. This is the problematic part. In that case, they are the new, all the new operators break and uh, are basically almost unusable. So, but there's a solution to that. And this is using a color space strip in the stack and setting this to identify color space. So then we have a very similar logic. We have input color spaces, they're all converted to the preferred working color space. Then base light assumes the image is in the working color space up until a certain point in the stack where the user inserts an color space operator. And I will show how this is done in a moment. 
set to identify color space and then we re-identify the image correctly as our viewing color space or as our great result color space. In most cases that will be REC 1886. And then the image flows through the stack in the correct state up until the cursor viewing color space. So the same example here, we would have the same stack. We have both sources converted to log C3, everything good up until layer five. And now below layer five, the colorist inserted a identify color space operator set to identify as REC 1886. And now Baselight has the right understanding what is going on, which color space is the image in, and then the operators work correctly. So let's show that as an example. So here we're back in our stack and we remember that here in, in layer two, I added the contrast to the image. So that's layer one, I'm doing nothing. Layer two, adding the contrast and in layer three, all the new operators, they basically broke the image. Let's set this here to single graph layout. And now the only thing I need to do is either inside layer two, that's the cleanest way of doing it. Here do a change operator type and put in an identify, but uh, I'm doing it as a separate strip. I insert a color space. We don't want to convert any color spaces. We don't want to change any actual pixel values with that. So we're just identifying the color space. And now we say the image is not T-log anymore. Now the image is REC 886. And you see it has zero effect here on the image and on the color pipeline. So basically you're not losing anything uh, from a creative point of view. When you're that adding, you're getting exactly the same result. And now if I go into layer four and now start to touch the curve grade, we can see the image is not producing artifacts anymore. If I go into X grade and do something, we can do that here. And what was the other example that I showed? Ah, a base grade on this one. So now we can desaturate the image with base grade without artifacts here and also add more saturation to the image without any artifacts. So everything works as cleanly and as high quality as it should. So let's go to the stack with the true light layer. So with the true light, we could do the same thing. So just insert a color space operator, identify REC 1886, and we can see no change on the image. And now downstream of that operator, if we go in and if we want to darken our yellow peppers, yeah, that works now with uh, X grade. Although we're now working in a REC 709 image, so we can see it's a little bit compressed here in that end, but at least it's not producing any artifacts or the, the curve grade is now also working cleanly. And probably you believe me that also here on the third shot, it's doing the, the right thing. So basically now what we can do on these shots, and you should also see that when I turn the great result color space off, set to from stack, it's again, it stays the same image. Also this one here is still the same. So there it has zero effect once we have that in. Here on the third one, we don't have it in yet. So here we have to insert it into the stack. And so now it's working. But now what you might notice is if I delete that grade here, is that you don't have the, what I call the, the bypass all effect. Some colorists, they rely on the bypass all effect. They want to sh uh, show a big um, log image to proper looking image um, thing on the display. Uh, but this one you can still achieve with that operator. So I'm now inserting that color space operator and I'm setting this one here to a special category, which I, in my case, I call it no bypass. And in the baseline preferences here, timeline, we can scroll down to the categories area. There's a point called don't bypass strips of category. And here I just added my no bypass category. You only have to do that once. And so what does that mean? 
So when I press bypass all, that strip is still active. So now I could go in and say, um, here I'm going in and making the image a little bit darker, doesn't much make much sense yet, but now I'm going in here and basically bringing back the contrast into the image and the saturation manually. Now if I hit bypass all, we can see our log image again. So now all the layers are bypassed except for that identify color space script. So we still have the bypass all effect available. Also renders to ungraded VFX blades should be easier in that style. So there you need to, uh, there are less mistakes can happen in a Telecine setup. And for people using LUTs, there's even a simpler way. You can still also just use the identify color space strip. So if you want to have everything always the same, or, or if you're switching sometimes using LUTs, sometimes don't, just insert the identify color space strip as a starting point into the stack. And basically, and that strip ideally should be placed at the point where the image is not in the log space anymore, but suddenly looking correctly on the display. If you're unsure about that, then place it, I would say usually place it better to place it higher in the stack than lower. And in, in, in the worst case, uh, put it uh, at the very top, but then the color managed operators would not work ideally while the image is still in the lock space. Then base grade would not work in accurate photographic stops, but at least it would never produce these nasty artifacts. But I said that with the LUTs, there's even a better or an easier way. So let's get rid of the true light strip because we have the LUT operator available and the LUT operator basically has the color management built in. So here we would just set the input color space of the LUT. In that case, that would be here as log three. And then we set the output space to rec 1886. And now I need to select my LUT file. Yeah, I have my Sony S log three, rec 709 cube. And so now we can see it's doing exactly the same thing as the true light and the identify color space did in combination, but just in a single operator. But the downside is when you have, when you use the LUT operator, you don't have the, basically you don't have the bypass all effect in uh, built in. So if you want the bypass all effect going back to the log image, then you should insert an identify color space below the LUT. So now, you would get the bypass all effect. I hope that makes it clear how you can get the same functionality as you had with the great result color space with that single identify color space strip in the timeline and what the benefits are and that you can, with that strip, you get a much better um, performance out of the new operators in Baselight. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you next time.